This short film tells the story of why and how we had solar PV panels fitted. It was our son who alerted us to the government-backed scheme where if you fitted photovoltaic cells on your roof, you would be paid by your energy company for every kilowatt of electricity that you generated. In addition, you could use that electricity to save your own bills and any electricity you didn't use would be actually sold back to the national grid. And this scheme was guaranteed for 25 years and was index linked. It was, in my son's words, therefore a no-brainer, particularly if you had savings, because you were guaranteed a return on your investment of between 6 and 9% over this 25 years. And with current interest rates at anything from half to 2.5%, that seemed to make really good sense to us. But the current very generous feed-in tariff rate of 41.3p for every kilowatt you generate was only guaranteed until April 2012. And if you installed the system after that, it was 8.5% less per annum um, as a feed-in tariff. So it made sense to do it, get on and do it now. Besides having the money to pay for it, and for those not fortunate enough to have savings you could always get a loan, you also had to have a southerly facing roof and one that wasn't overshadowed by other buildings or trees, and that we do have. I was attracted by those figures naturally, but also the bit about doing a bit for the environment by reducing your carbon footprint. And also as someone who's coming up to retirement, the thought of ever increasing fuel bills um, and being able to offset those by generating some of your, your own electricity was very attractive too. But it all sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? It can't be that generous a deal. So I contacted Sunswitch, which is a company which is based um, in Milton Keynes, and asked for a no obligation survey. To check I had a suitably aligned roof, they began by asking me to download a picture of my house from Google Earth together with its grid reference and to send it to them. And they'd arrange a site visit from one of their system designers. What we learnt was that we could fit a 1.26 kilowatt peak system generating an estimated 976 kilowatt hours of electricity in a year for which we'd be paid 41.3p for every single one of these kilowatt hours. We'd also be paid an additional 3p for every kilowatt hour we did not use ourselves but exported back to the national grid. Based on those estimated figures and assuming that we'd export half the electricity we generated, we would receive a payment of £418 each year from our electricity company. The feed-in tariffs on which these payments are based are guaranteed for 25 years, are index-linked and are also tax-free. Based on a standard rate of electricity of 13p per kilowatt hour, we'd also make an estimated saving of £63 a year on our electricity bill. So, the total benefit, the income plus the savings, was estimated to be £481 a year. The cost of purchase and installation of the six panels, including scaffolding and electrical upgrades with no hidden charges, was £7,956 which set against the anticipated benefit over 25 years of £18,711 gives a total profit of £10,755 over 25 years, or put another way, an annual return on our initial investment of about 6% per annum. In addition to this electricity generation, we'd save 554 kilos of CO2 a year by generating our own electricity. There was, however, one issue that did have to be resolved before we could go ahead. We are within the conservation area of Wolverton, and I had to check out whether or not this would be a permitted development. Well, it was OK. It didn't need planning permission. But, however, we were advised to get a certificate of proposed lawful use of development so that if the house were ever to be sold, potential purchasers could see that it was a permitted development. And all this cost £75. We were now all set for the installation. A few days before the installers arrive, scaffolding is erected. This is because our roof overhangs and a normal scaffolding tower won't be safe for the installers to work off. The installers arrive bright and early in the morning and start working on the roof. 
So what, what, what are you actually doing up there at the moment? Just putting the first brackets on at the moment, getting the first rail on, so that we can start putting all the, all the panels on. You have to start with your first rail. What, the lower you, one? The first one, yeah, the lowest the one. one. Yeah, okay. Then once you've got the first one on, that sets the course for all the rest oh. and gives you something to work off. Oh, oh. So it's just a little bit cold today. This work took all day. Tell me what you've been doing then. Uh, right, at this stage we've put all the rails on, we've marked the roof out for the centre, removed the tiles where the brackets are going, remodified the brackets so that they fit the style of roof, drilled and fixed every single one with two fixings, cut the tiles, replaced the tiles, we've just left it now so that first thing in the morning we can come up, start setting the panels up and then we'll trim the edges off and then that's basically it on the roof. Back next morning, the first job is to install the solar PV panels on the brackets on the roof. We've hoisted the PV panels up actually onto the scaffolding, tested them on the top of the scaffolding to make sure there's continuity there, make sure there's a voltage on the panel before we actually put them on the roof, because obviously once they're on the roof, we don't really want to be taking them off. And now we've just started to actually put them actually onto the roof um, and fix them to the rails and that's where we are so far. And are they kind of connected to each other then? They're all linked together, yeah, in series, yeah. to make one continuous circuit, and then eventually there'll just be two connections at the top, which eventually will be going through our lead slate into the roof space and connecting into our DC isolator. So you say there's a lead slate? There's going to, we're going to make a lead slate that will actually have glands in it that the cables will go through to create waterproof on the roof, to make the roof waterproof. Meanwhile, Inside the house, an electrician is sorting out the wiring and making the connections between the solar panels and the electricity meter. Yes. The generation, the generating electricity from the roof is being put back into the national grid through this supply and this is what the meter registers every unit you use of the generation of the roof solar panels. Uh, this um, feeding tariff is guaranteed for 25 years. Yes. But how do we know that the like the technology will last that long, you know. The thing um, basically, the one of the chaps we went on a course with who ran the actual course, uh, he'd been doing it for 30 years. And um, the reason why they can guarantee him for 25 after 30 years, they've still not known anything to go wrong. Um, that's what on his experience, and he's been doing it for a lot of years now, not just in England, all around the world. Outside, an armoured cable is run up the side of the house from the meter into the loft where the inverter that converts the PV panel's DC current to AC current is located. What we've done is, is brought some cables through and put them into conduit yeah. round to the DC isolator so that we can make it safe before we connect up on the roof. Because obviously all them panels now on the roof are actually alive and they're waiting to deliver a current down yeah. to the um, inverter, which will be going on the wall in a minute. Okay, well, it's like a human brain, basically. <coughs> It's going to the sense. inverter, the inverters, yeah. Yeah, it's going to sense if, if it's not light enough outside, it don't register, and it shuts itself down. If it's producing too much, which could overeat and damage the inverter, if you get the perfect conditions outside, it also shuts down. Are there different size inverters for different numbers yeah. of panels? Yeah. yeah, different different kilowattages and voltages, uh, so they'll run uh, properly, so to speak. If you don't have the right weight rating, they won't work. You say. Now you'll see immediately there's nothing on because it's shut down because it's the brain said the weather is too dark yeah. I'm not going to generate anything for you so it automatically shuts it down. Right. When the light comes on tomorrow morning light gets up a uh, decent day it will start going through its first season the green light will flash and then it will stabilize and, you, and if you tap that screen like that the indication of what you're using or what you're getting comes up oh, it's right. just like another version of what you've got downstairs. Right. Well, that was filmed back in early January. It's now the beginning of April and the solar panels have been generating electricity steadily since then. Even on the dullest days, some electricity has been generated. The other good news is that the new financial year has brought an index-linked 4.8% rise in the feed-in tariff from 41.3p per kilowatt hour to 433 there's also been an increase in the export tariff, the amount you get for selling back to the electricity company any electricity you don't use, from 3p to 3.1p per kilowatt hour. 
I've watched as the amount of electricity generated in February outstripped that of January and how by the 10th day of March more electricity had been generated in the whole of February as the daylight lengthened. If you look at a chart of sunlight hours throughout the year, the best months are still to come. I've been taking weekly readings and working out how much I've been earning from a combination of the feed-in tariff and the export tariff and comparing it with how much I would have earned if I left the 8,000 that the installation cost in an ISA at Nationwide, gaining 2.5% per annum. As of the 3rd of April, the return from the solar panels in the first daylight poor three months was £72.23p, compared with £47.42p if I'd left it in the ISA. I've also saved some £250 of CO2. Not a bad start, I feel.